everybody my name is Lindsay. welcome or welcome back to my channel here on youtube i upload very girly girl lifestyle chronic illness disability awareness service dog and lgbtq content so for today's video it is requested occasionally i'll put on my instagram follow me on instagram if you don't already i will put a little question box and be like what videos do you want to see so today we're doing a video that actually got requested and it's low spoon day activities for people with chronic illness and disabilities so basically if you're having a flare day or if you're just having a day where you're like really low on spoons but you still want to do stuff these are a bunch of ideas for you in terms of stuff that you could do some of these you can even do with your eyes closed and relax some of them are a little bit more requiring than others but yeah so that is what today's video is going to be just some low spoon day activity ideas basically for you all <laughs> before we get into this video don't forget to stop watching and subscribe to join the family and don't forget to turn on that bell so that you know whenever i upload so let's just get right on into this video so the first thing is to watch some kind of show movie this could be any kind of genre whether it's comedy romance sports like whatever you're into watching a show watching a movie just putting something on on the tv even if you're on your phone in the background but definitely watching a movie is very low energy you can just sit chill and kind of turn your brain off that's one of my favorite things i like to do is just turn my brain off and watch some tv or a movie even if i'm not fully paying attention just getting to relax and still feeling like i'm doing something next thing is to read a book so this could also be any kind of book I personally tend to go towards motivational books, spiritual books, manifestation and witchy type of book. I also love poetry books and it doesn't have to be like a normal thick book or if you're really into reading that then go ahead. If there's a movie that you've always wanted to read the book for, pick it up. They also have Kindle versions, online versions of books that you can do. So there's many different ways you can access a book, but I just think it's a nice way to kind of shut off your brain and be doing something that's not involving a screen. It's, it's a nice kind of way to unplug listening to an audiobook. So if you're really not feeling good, I know on days where I'm really flaring and I'm really nauseous, I truly cannot even have my eyes open because I will just have a headache and horrible nausea and so I just have to close my eyes. So listening to an audiobook is kind of a way that you can get that sound because you're still listening to what's going on. I'm obsessed with my outfit today <laughs> i haven't done my makeup and like gotten ready in so long and i just i'm happy i feel good right now and i'm also just loving my vibe with my tattoos my new tattoos and this is only the beginning of the tattoos to come so i'm so excited sorry pause for that little mini update back to what we were talking about listening to an audiobook <laughs> it's just basically a way to kind of read but without having to do the reading part you're more just listening and processing as you go so it's definitely a nice way to kind of relax next is something i do all the time i love doing this and it is meditation or mindfulness so this is something that's been really helpful for my depression my anxiety meditation was recommended by a lot of my doctors and i gave it a try and i also love practicing mindfulness too like staying in the moment and acknowledging like where you're at how i'm feeling i don't know i just i think it's really good because it's something that doesn't require any effort or any energy like you literally don't have to do anything you just have to sit there and be present and acknowledge how you're feeling how you're doing and it's just nice to kind of get to connect to yourself and personally i use that time to heavily manifest i'll also pull out my tarot cards that's something i'm really into obviously if there's another kind of card or game or something you want to do that's also another low energy activity that you could do i love doing tarot readings when i'm having low-key days i'll whip out some crystals maybe light a candle i just love meditation and mindfulness and i've been really into imagery which is a huge thing in manifestation it's basically closing your eyes and just living in your dream Dream life like it's already there it's already happening and boy has this changed my life this year I have manifested almost everything on my dream board which just never happened before we're getting like really close to almost everything on there which is insane I'm so excited dedicating time to focusing on my goals and my dreams and what I want to achieve and what I'm working towards I feel like it keeps me really humble keeps me focused keeps me driven it's definitely one of my number one things that I personally enjoy doing next Next is any form of writing. So my fiance loves to do this. Any type of writing is 
gonna be great. This can be even making lists. Sometimes when I'm really stressed out or overwhelmed and I don't have a lot of energy, I'm like, let me just make a list of what I need to do or what I need to do this month or this week or whatever it may be. To-do list, even if it's just for a day. This could be poetry. I have one of those books where it's just 110 writing prompts and you literally just pick a writing prompt and then you answer it and you just write it out and answer the prompts and then you can save the book and go back and look at your different answers to the prompts. So I love doing that. Also, if you like journaling, journaling is something that got me through a lot of my younger years. Like I used to journal religiously pretty much. I would do it every day. It was my outlet to kind of get everything out. I would just write it all out into a journal, diary, whatever you want to call it. Cuddling and playing with pets. So if you do have a pet of any kind, hamster, cat, dog, guinea pig, whatever it may be, any kind of pets can be super, super helpful and always provide a low energy activity. Cuddling, playing with your pets, definitely cuddling would be the more low energy option. But honestly, with my cat, she has her favorite toy. And if I just lay in bed and just do this with the toy, she will be the happiest girl in the world and entertained forever. It doesn't even have to be high energy play with your pets it could just be as something as simple as like throwing a ball and making them bring it back to you animals are so therapeutic to me that's why i've grown up with animals my entire life like i have never gone a time and not had some kind of an animal whether it was a cat or a dog uh this one i already kind of mentioned but light a candle just kind of set aside some like mental health relaxation time this can go along with doing a face mask or doing self-care you could paint your nails paint your toes throw on a face mask just lay in your bed and relax that's what me and my fiance did the other night we literally just put face masks on and laid next to each other in bed before we went to sleep and it was so nice and relaxing and any kind of self-care that's just low energy but you can still do to kind of feel good listening to music is another great thing that you can do i love just singing along with music harmonizing to music a low energy activity and you can just sing along to your favorite song whether that's a musical or an album or your artist that you love but listening to music is just a really nice way to just really not do anything but be doing something at the same time. Very nice way to relax and just listen to music that you enjoy. Just sit outside, get some fresh air, soak up the sun. Uh, this is something that is pretty low activity. It obviously depends on the heat, especially for me. Like the weather will is a huge indicator because if it's too cold, it will hurt my EDS. And if it's too hot, then I'll probably faint from my pots. So <laughs> it's got to be the right temperature. That's why I love the 70s. 70s is like my ideal perfect weather. One of my favorite things to do is sit out back in our backyard. It's so nice. We have a little chair that we sit. I haven't gone out there in a while because the bugs have been really bad and I have mosquito bites all over my legs. But even just going out and getting some fresh air, like especially if you're like me and you work in office nine to five, inside all day looking at a computer screen, that's what I do. I love it, but that's what I do. It can be really, really nice to just wind down and just have some outside time. When it is a nice temperature, I love sitting outside. I love getting fresh air. It really helps me feel better and reset and it's something that's an activity that is still something different but it also doesn't require a ton of energy you watch or listen to a podcast podcast is very similar to like books movies like just watching something putting something on that you can really just listen to or watch another low-key energy activity podcasts are always a nice way if you want to like kind of hear people talk or like talk about a specific topic just whatever you like to listen to throw on a podcast stargazing watching sunrise sunsets just kind of going along with like going outside getting fresh air just being present and enjoying the outdoors in any way i'm also such a like oh my god look at the sky look at the stars look at the moon look at the sun i'm just such a look at the sky bitch that i i just love outdoor stuff like as much as my body hates it sometimes i love being outside because it's a great low energy activity if you're really wanting to like actually kind of do something but without doing something uh one you could always watch a vlog on youtube of someone else doing it so that way you can kind of live through them i do that a lot especially people who are like travel vloggers i'm like i wish <laughs> i wish i could travel this much something else you can do is do virtual tours of places you can look up historical landmarks you can look up zoos aquariums whatever it may be try to find a virtual tour of it or a vlog of someone going there or doing whatever activity you're thinking of like a lot of times up when i'm like oh 
oh, I wish I could go to Disney. I'll watch a Disney vlog. <laughs> so yeah, do like a virtual tour video type of thing. Spend some time on social media. Now, God forbid, I think it's good to have a little bit of separation. Like you don't want to spend all your time on social media, especially I have to set boundaries and stuff for myself because I do social media for my full-time nine to five job and for my hobby. So I really have to delegate my energy and everything. But honestly, social media, I make my social media a healthy place. Like I don't tolerate hate or disrespect. Like I will block you. I will delete your comment. I really don't care. My social media is my happy place where I uplift myself and other people in the chronic illness and disability community. And hate is just not tolerated on my social media. Spending time on social media can be a nice low energy activity. You can do it anywhere. You can do it on your couch in your bed in the kitchen wherever you are you can just relax and just scroll on your be on your phone or your computer whatever that might look like for you this could be scrolling on instagram and just like looking at your friends stuff this could be making pinterest boards this is something that i love to do in my free time i love pinterest boards my whole life is on pinterest because there is really no interaction with anyone and it's just aesthetic pictures, inspiration for my life. Uh, obviously watching YouTube videos I already mentioned, but that can be a great way to kind of waste some time, your mind off of things, as well as watching TikToks. You could also like sit down, film a video. Honestly, sitting down and doing my makeup is something that I love to do. God forbid it does take some energy sometimes, but it is pretty low energy and it's something that I really enjoy. I grew up wearing makeup as a competitive cheerleader, so I've always loved the art of it and learning and trying new looks and everything and I love lashes. I'm such a lashes girl, but that's another thing, just a low energy thing that you can do for fun is if you do enjoy makeup, you could do makeup on your partner or do it on yourself, but that's something else that I enjoy doing. You could also sit down, make a YouTube video, sit down, make a TikTok, make an Instagram reel. Just social media in general offers a lot of low energy things to do on your phone. The next big thing is to reach out to a friend. This could be texting a friend, this could be video chatting, like FaceTiming a friend or family member. I think it's nice, especially sometimes when you're feeling lonely or isolated. I know a lot of times because battling with chronic illness and disabilities, you don't have a lot of energy to do things in the first place and a lot of times that can give you FOMO, feel like you're missing out on a lot of stuff because you just don't have the energy to do it. So kind of getting that face-to-face -face interaction without having to expel the energy can be really nice and even just texting my friends like I love just doing little text updates with them and just checking in seeing how they're doing hearing about what's going on with them and me updating them it's just nice it's nice to text a friend and catch up with them or give a friend a call and talk to them for five minutes and just catch up and see each other's faces I notice after every time I face a friend I always feel better I always feel a little bit happier because I got that social interaction that I feel like I lack so much because I don't go out and I don't go anywhere and do anything that obviously that will change when my service dogs Simon comes home. Next thing is to design a dream board, vision board, mood board, whatever you want to look like. You could do this on Pinterest. You could do this on Canva. Literally when I'm bored, I will make stuff on Canva. It's a graphic design platform. I make my channel art on Canva and a lot of other stuff. So just playing around on the computer program, uh, even if it's playing a game, a puzzle, or like Scrabble, or games on their phone, that's obviously always something that you can do. Just being artistic in any kind of way, I personally, I love coloring books. I think they're so fun that yes, adults can color. <laughs> okay, if anyone tells you otherwise, screw them because I love coloring. Coloring is such a nice mind relax. However, I can't do it for long periods of time because holding the pens will hurt my hands because of my EDS. But yeah, any type of coloring or drawing, painting, any type of artistic thing that you think you might want to do. I know one time me and my mom got paint by number things from Michael's and we did painting for one day. Just doing something artistic. I love making resin tags and art. Um, I think that that's super fun too. So any type of artistic thing that you can do sitting down at your home, an activity, it's something fun, it's something to express yourself while still being low energy. And I'm gonna round out this video with the best tip of all for a low energy, low spoon day activity. Online shopping! <laughs>
<laughs> I am such a shopaholic, not even for myself, literally for my dog. <laughs> but I love shopping, even if I'm not checking out or actually buying. Oh my god, I'm literally losing my voice. Sorry for the scratchiness. Online shopping is always something that you can do wherever is your favorite store. Go online, throw whatever you want into your cart, whether it's Target, Walmart, Chewy. I've been on Chewy a lot. Literally just throw whatever you see that you like in your cart, look at it, and then exit out of it and go do it on another platform. I do that all the time, but it's low energy, but I also feel like I'm kind of shopping, but without having to be out in public, risk COVID and you know, it's just, I like, I like online shopping a lot. It's low energy and like I said, you literally don't even have to buy anything. Even just window shopping online, it's kind of like shopping, but without the effort. <laughs> So yeah, of course I had to end off strong with shopping, online shopping as my last recommendation because that was my favorite thing to do of all time. I love online shopping, it's my favorite. <laughs> all right everyone well that is it for today's video i really hope that you all enjoyed it i hope that it was helpful and that i gave you lots of ideas of low spoon day activities that you can do when you are either flaring or just having low spoons fully feel you you are not alone at all and thank you so much for watching this video please feel free to comment below any other activities that you recommend so that we can just make this a nice loving community of support to lift each other up give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to stop sharing and subscribe to join the family i love you all so much and i will see you in my next video bye